good afternoon. You may notice we have a different bulletin today. Yeah. Yes. So it's our it's our lessons and carol service. So I hope you hope you brought your uh, voices with you today a little bit. Yeah. But I uh, yeah I usually like to have a service the last Sunday before Christmas to kind of uh, celebrate uh, with our carols. Uh, and let me go through the announcement of the Life of Covenant Woods, and then we'll begin our worship service. Let me get her my phone first. My daughter's traveling right now from New Hampshire, and she be, should be getting in here hopefully by 8 p.m. tonight, so I'm a little anxious and got the phone handy, and just in case. Uh, but anyway, looking forward to seeing her. Uh, so uh, the Monday night program for tomorrow night is Christmas in Concert. And Kellen, uh, Ken Kellner and his trio will be leading songs, classic Christmas songs that, they, that we've all grown up with. Um, and uh, that'll be tomorrow night here in the Commons at 7 o'clock. And then also, uh, we, every year we have a, um, a Christmas service that kind of celebrates, uh, it used to be called the Blue Christmas Service, but now it's called the Longest Night uh, Christmas Service. But it kind of looks at the melancholy feelings that could come from Christmas, but it still lifts up the hopefulness of the assurance of Christmas uh, as part of that service. And that'll be on Tuesday at 3 o'clock uh, here in the, in the Commons, called the Longest Night Service. And what else is going on this week that we need to lift up? Um, anything else? Okay. Um, and the movie for this uh, Friday, it's a, it's a Wonderful Life, will be on the multi-purpose room at 7 o'clock. That's always a classic. It seems like we never, it never gets old, it seems like. It'll be on. It'll be on uh, on Christmas Eve of all nights. Yeah, it'll be on Christmas Eve on Friday night at seven o'clock, and then again on the following Tuesday. And then birthdays this week, uh, we have Ardeth Dom on the nineteenth. We have Karen Westbrook tomorrow. We have, yes, we have Marie Blatt the twenty third and Jean Watson the twenty fifth. So wish these people a happy birthday if you see them today, uh, or see them around. Yeah. And that's all I have in terms of announcements. Anything else going on that we need to lift up or be aware of? Okay. Well, if not, it is the Sabbath, and we come together to worship, to renew our faith, uh, and to lean into God, our Creator. Let us come and worship.
Good afternoon. We begin our service today with the call to worship. I think everybody knows I read the light part, you read the dark part. The earth is God's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. Lift your heads, O gates, lift them high, everlasting doors, and the ruler of glory shall come in. God strong and mighty, God mighty indeed. Who is this king of glory, ruler of glory? We light the fourth candle as a symbol of purity and peace. May the visitation of your Holy Spirit, O God, guide us in being your agents of love and peace. Our first lesson is from Jeremiah. 23, the fifth and sixth verses. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The hymn this morning, this afternoon beginning is, O Come All Ye Faithful. Our second lesson comes from the prophet Isaiah, and it's chapter 40, verse 3 through 5 and 9 through 11. And here's the text. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. And he will feed his flock like a shepherd. And he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom 
and gently lead them, lead the mother sheep. It's a time that we come together in prayer to lean into God, to seek God's guidance and strength and assurance in our lives. And as we do so, we want to keep in our prayers um, Bill Gilliam, who's a new resident here at Covenant Woods. He's in the hospital and hopefully coming back uh, soon. And then um, we want to continue to keep in our prayer Bud Hammersley, who's over in health care as well. Uh, we've also had several residents who have gone over to health care temporarily. I think uh, Jack Mitchell also is over in health care. At this time, uh, we want to keep him in our prayers along with Phyllis Powers and many others who've gone over um, and people in health care. Um, also, that we want to keep, continue to keep in our prayers the people of Mayfield, Kentucky and, and many surrounding areas from the tornado uh, Friday a week ago. Anybody else lift up in prayer at this time that you'd like to lift up? You'd like to? Yeah. Okay. Well, let us come to God with our hearts open and our souls reaching to God, our creator, and let us... First, provide a place of quietness to be in prayerful state. Almighty God, as, as the Advent wreath glows, and we sing the carols that rejoice in Jesus Christ, your incarnate word. Oh, we just want to give you thanks. May our celebration of Advent and Christmas illuminate within our souls, embracing us with the power of hope and assurance. And singing about the birth of Jesus, may we rediscover your gift of peace, your love, and your goodwill, so that we may share this joy and hope to others. And Lord, we also lift up to you those who are grieving during this time, this season, the many families of Mayfield, connected, Kentucky, and surrounding areas, our own community, uh, with Helen Singleton and, and many more in our community who are grieving. Uh, we lift them up to you, Lord, and uh, we lift up to you Bill Gillian, who's in the hospital, and, and Bud Hammersley, who's in health care, and Jack, Jack Mitchell, and so many more in need of your of your strength. May your spirit abide with them and uh, fill them with your love and your guidance. As we pray all these things, we, we lean into Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, praying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our third lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, and it's chapter 1, verse 26 through 38. It's Gabriel's visit to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he'll be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, 
and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he'll be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said to Gabriel, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. If you turn to your bulletin, let us offer this reading together. Emmanuel, God has promised and God is with us. Give us peace as we need peace. Give us courage to live in times without peace. Awaken us to the hope of your reign, but restrain us from vain hopes in the dominions and false powers around us. Lead us to service in your world. Holy God, spirit of holiness and good tidings, we come through Advent and Christmas again and again to learn the meaning of incarnation. Form and receive our words of praise, prayer, and prophecy as we feebly attempt to magnify your name and rejoice in your salvation in this Christmas moment and in the faithful journey of our years and lives. Amen. Fourth reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill of country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the child leapt in her, in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will, be, will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to, the, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants 
forever. If you turn to your bulletin, let us offer this response. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. From this day on, generations shall call me blessed. The arm of the Lord is strong. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Mm, amen. As you know, this particular text, it's known as the Magnificat, right? And even though Mary has not yet seen the birth of Jesus, even though she has She's not sure what her future holds. Mary trusts in the prophecy of Gabriel. And upon hearing Elizabeth's greeting, Mary sings the song of God's faithfulness. Mary willingly embraces the role she will play in God's salvific plan for her. Can you imagine that? As a young teenager, probably 14 or 15 years old, just trusting this pathway ahead of you that you have no idea where it's going to lead you. And she sings... My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. In singing, Mary remembers God's faithfulness in the past. He has brought the powerful down from their thrones. Nebuchadnezzar no longer holds Israel exile, right? He was the strongest power in the whole world during that era, and he fell away. And so Mary is singing. God was active then. And God will be active again. God has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to his ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Through her song, Mary renews the promise of God, believing that she will encounter a life-giving, powerful God in her ordinary, mundane life that is unpredictable and has taken a, a, a radical turn for her. She had planned on getting married to, Jerry, to Joseph, a normal wedding, and now she is pregnant, right? A virgin who is pregnant and found herself in an entirely different role, being the mother of the Savior. Luke's account of Jesus' birth, his narrative, if you take the Gospel of Luke, it flows like a song. After Mary, Zechariah will take the stage to praise God's faithfulness to Israel and the birth of his son and Elizabeth, who he thought was barren who would be John the Baptist, right, when he is born. And when Jesus is born in a small stable in Bethlehem, guess who else sings? The angels. They start to sing with their glorious heavenly voices. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace, goodwill among all people, right? And eight days later, Simeon will croon about God's mercy being extended to all the world in his own way. He will sing, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people. Luke understands the power of song. And you who have sung in church choirs or community choirs, you know the power of song, right? When you're harmonizing, when it's all coming together, a song takes on a life of its own. It's very powerful. When you're singing in a group, it lifts us up, doesn't it? Words sung take on a life of their own. Songs of praise, songs of thanksgiving that unite us, that unite us with the one to whom we are singing, right? When we get it just right. And songs like Mary's Magnificat are songs of courage and promise that not only names our hopes, but also brings them into being, right? The song takes us over. You see, when we're singing, when we're singing just right, our hearts become open vessels, Last Friday, a week ago, as I mentioned, the tornado hit Mayfield, Kentucky, right, and just destroyed so many buildings, including churches. And guess what people did on Sunday a week ago? They went to worship. Can you believe that? They went to worship. 
They came from their crumbled homes and they gathered together among the mass and they started to pray. They heard the scriptures and they sang. And they sang. One such church, Mayfield Community, Community Church, they sang Silent Night as a group. Silent Night, Holy Night. Son of God loves pure light. Right? A reporter asked the lady afterwards what the service was like for her, and she said, this service helps give me strength to carry on. Like Mary, this woman who's had this destruction, she's leaning, leaning into a future. She's not sure how it's going to come together, what's going to happen, but she trusts in the faithfulness of God. That's what we do when we come together and sing songs, songs of faith. As we sing the carols today, I want you to think about what you are singing. What are those words that you are singing? What do they mean to you? Singing the carols can awaken within us a greater sense of faithfulness. And through life's experiences, singing this year, singing the next year, singing and singing over again as we go through changes, as our world goes through changes, singing again and again, it helps us to find a new sense of faith. And faith is renewed with different and deeper experiences of God's faithfulness. Singing has power. Singing has power. Travis, you ever heard of Travis Tritt, the, the country music singer? Travis Tritt, before he became a, a, a I think he was from Georgia, wasn't he? I think before he, before he became a, 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 a music hit, he used to sing in, in halfway joints. And I think I told you this a long time ago. He sang in halfway joints and... They were pretty scary places, he said. Sometimes they were dangerous places because your fights would break out and there you'd be in the middle of a fight trying to sing. And so Travis, and during and singing these places, he found out the power of carols, singing carols. He says, Silent Night proved to be my all-time lifesaver. Just when bar fights started getting out of hand, when bikers were reaching for their pool cues and rednecks were heading for their gun racks and their trucks, I'd start playing Silent Night. It could be the middle of July. I didn't care. Sometimes the bikers and the rednecks, they'd even start crying, standing there watching me sweat and play Christmas carols. The power of song. The Son of God loves pure light. So let us come. Let us sing these carols. Let us listen to the birth story of Jesus. And sing this Sunday before Christmas. Like Mary, let our souls magnify the Lord and renew our faith in the hidden ways in which God is active in our world right now with all the news we are hearing. It's important for us to sing, right? And continue to lean into God, who is our faithful, our faithful creator. Hear this text on the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. And this was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. And he went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in a bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the end.
Our reading continues with chapter 2 of Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. In this last text, I'd like for us to share it together, right? In the incarnate word, the text from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, 1 through 5, and 9 through 12. So let us read this together. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. And what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God.
May the one who by his incarnation displayed the mysteries and love of God fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessing of God, the love of Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen.